Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 24 here on season two. And today we are getting into corporate cannabis released on Stash. This is, I guess, more late news considering that it was released yesterday, but it's news nonetheless. This has a, a, been a long and anticipated ETF that has now been released on Stash. Big news, it, it means that, that Stash truly values their, their customer input and their customers in general and that they are trying to provide the best value to each and every single client and customer that they come in contact with. So hats off to them. During this episode, I will get into my long-term thoughts. We'll look at the charts and then we'll also get into different risk things that, that I've considered when investing into the corporate cannabis ETF. So let's go ahead and take a look at it on Stash. Uh, this is the actual ETF, it's called Corporate Cannabis. The actually ticker is MJX. Right now it has a 0% zero. ETF. We'll go ahead and view the website here in a little bit. Top holdings are going to be Kronos Group, Aurora Cannabis. So that's um, obviously Denver right there. GW Pharmaceutical. I actually looked at it buying into probably like a year ago today and then so on and so forth moving down the line. So far the lifetime obviously it fluctuates quite a bit. It's pretty volatile in that regards. Like even the daily change it's down 3.2%. Crazy stuff but the year to date is definitely up 14%. Mainstream marijuana is a young volatile industry which means that it's risky. Vulnerable, see volatile, just, uh, just replace that with risk. It basically combines legal cannabis cultivation, distribution, and medical application with big tobacco stocks as well. Right here, warning, this is a high risk speculative fund exposes to legal and regulatory uncertainty. Consider how your investment in this product may treat under any rules, policies, and procedures you may be subject to, including by your employer. So let's go ahead and view the actual funds of the website really quickly. Here's the top tens, and you can download all the holdings that you want. And we'll just go to view performance. So one month they're up 11%, three months they're up 5.42%, six months up 15, a year to date they're up 39. So yeah, that would be that would be pretty much it. We can view the profile fund in, in Ledger, but I don't think it really makes a big difference. We'll go from here and move into the uh, chart, the overall chart. So this is the entire, what I, I think is the entire length of the chart. Uh, I don't need to hide that for now. And let's go to all. So this is the entire, I don't know why it like does like half the page. Okay, one year. We'll just do one year. That's about where it started. So it opened probably at like $25. Right now it sits at, I think close was, yeah, 37.33. So pretty solid returns. What I will do is I'll put on, this is how I would, I mean, long-term, I can't really like give you guys long-term like technical indicators. I don't really do a whole lot of technicals with long-term, but this is how I would do a short-term kind of swing trade if I was looking in to this one. However, it's not set up. This right setup's not up right now. What I do is I put on the Kettner channels, Bollinger Bands, and Momentum. So what I'm specifically looking for is, is when the Kettner channels go inside the Bollinger Bands. So if I could zoom in more right in this area, you can see the... So these are the Kettner channels. It's kind of hard to see because they're about the same color. The Bollinger Bands are going to fluctuate more. So here is a cross underneath. So the Bollinger Bands now cross underneath on the Kettner channels. The Kettner channels are, are up here if you follow my mouse. And then we get a cross right here too. So what I'm looking for also is the way that the momentum is moving, coming in and then going out. So right now we come in or out right here. We get that cross. We're under, but we start building up momentum, moving higher as we're getting ready to come out. And when we come out of the channel right here, at this area right here, that's the time that I would probably buy in because if you zoom out a little bit, you get this huge spike. So you get a, a basically a spike from about uh, $30 all the way up to $38. And then you sell as the momentum starts to drop, boom. Once the momentum drops down, you boom, you hit the sell. So you basically take maybe $8 profit um, or more. That's how I would swing trade that. That would be a few days worth right there. You would be in that trade probably like four or five days. As far as short term though, that setup is not presented itself here. It looks like we're squeezing, the Bollinger Bands are squeezing back down and maybe they'll come back inside the Kettner channels, but we'll see what the momentum also says. If the momentum still continues going down when we go in, then it's probably not a, a safe buy. We're probably gonna see it it hit to decrease as far as technicals, the technical aspect of that, that goes. So I hope that that makes 
more sense as far as technicals. However, looking at it long term, it's just that that stock is extremely risky, risky business to begin with. But first of all, like like the the ETF says on Stash, first of all, I would make sure that it's okay with your employer for you to invest in that. I know if you're in the military, it's not a good idea. It is illegal at the federal level. And so you can be prosecuted if you are in the military buying that ETF because it would be considered like distributing or something like that. So uh, I would contact, first of all, if you're in the military, I would contact legal if you don't believe me and, and figure it out. But they're going to probably tell you the same thing that I told you. If you're just in a business, mm, contact your employer and make sure that it's it's an okay thing for you to purchase and then you're not going to get fired over buying an etf that exposes yourself to the cannabis industry however like i said before the cannabis industry is super shaky right now and, and most of that risk hedges on whether it will be legal or whether they're going to put harsher sanctions on the cannabis industry moving forward right now at least for the past eight years it's been pretty relaxed under the obama administration with trump taking the uh, leadership as president and then jeff sessions basically is issuing some news that if the dea have any extra resources to put that towards exploiting cannabis people that are are looking to profit off of cannabis buy and sell or whatever it is so that was what we had a significant dip in over the last probably five or six days but like I said, long term, basically, you're just looking at whether it becomes legal or if it's going to stay illegal and scheduled as a schedule one drug. I think if even if they were to move it to schedule two, I think it would be a still a a it would definitely be a win for the cannabis industry. Long term, I think that it will be accepted. Alcohol went through the same thing with the prohibition when we understand, I think, moving forward that that just denying people access is probably not the best answer and throwing them in prison is not the best answer to say that cannabis doesn't have any medical benefits and to leave it schedule one is just completely uh, i think ignorant there are is research out there that says that it does have medical benefits at least um, whether that moves into recreational cannabis or not is up to the states and the in the federal government government to decide but i think that definitely my push is that it, it gets removed from a schedule one and without a way researchers can s seriously look at it and understand whether it does have more medical benefits than what we already know or whether it has only a, a limited number of medical benefits for me i i like the fact i can look at that long term i do know that there's going to be bumps in the road investing in that long term but for a majority of my cannabis stock that i hold uh, it's long term um i do i do sell off when percentages get out of balance but for the most part it is long term for me i'm not looking to swing trade day trade my investment into that like industry is specifically long term anyways we will go ahead and leave it right there let's go ahead and dive into the question of the day which is what movie would be greatly improved if it was made a, a musical uh i i don't know i'm not really big into the movies but if i had to guess i think it would be funny if like Step Brothers was made into a musical or even like maybe like The Dark Knight was a musical, I don't think it would add or greatly improve the video. I think it would just make it more comedic or I think it would be, I think it actually would be awesome if like Will Ferrell did a musical, a comedy musical or something like that. I, I just, I just know, I think it would be like a game changer. Anyways, like I always say, if you have any questions regarding Stash, Acorns, Robin Hood, as well as general investing advice, business Etsy coaching, Post those questions down below. Don't forget to subscribe up here and check out my Stash Recap December Edition. Wow. You know what? Check out my Stash Recap December Edition. Check out this other video right here. <laughs> and as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.